Hello everyone, I will be recording on the tutorial uh, three that we're actually going to be discussing today. So, the first questions, again, uh, as I mentioned, please uh, remember to uh, remember to try yourself first before you actually uh, come to the class. So the first one, uh, the first few questions is actually a bit uh, straightforward. So, um, discrete random variable and discrete probability distributions. Yeah? So, number of adults living at home at a randomly city block is described as a following probability distribution. Which is this table, um, sorry, a, yeah, <laughs> which is this table, and then, oh, wait for a while, and the uh, mouse, sorry. So, uh, what's the probability that four or more adults reside at a randomly side of home? So, from here, you'll be able to know that the probability is supposed to be calculating p x equals to four, right? Yeah, sorry, four or more. So four or more, more than equals to four. But you also notice that we are actually uh, having this uh, table, and four or more is actually resides over here. So when you are writing this one, you are basically refer to this one. Okay. And what's the answer? If you still recall, all the probability uh, uh, that you sum up together is supposed to be equal to 1. So eventually, for us to calculate this one is 1 minus probability x equals to 1 plus probability of x equals to 2 plus probability of x equals to 3. Okay, I'm doing it in a more lengthy manner because I um, just want to let you know this whole thing, how it actually works. So it is these three things sum up together, 0 0.85 equals to 0 0.15. Do you think there's actually any assumption over here that actually we employed? Yeah, it's, po it's actually possible there's actually an assumption. There's no uh, house is actually empty. Okay, because they you don't really have any uh, probability for zero over here. And for you to for you to able to use this uh uh complement rule, okay, somehow it's a complement rule, it's one minus the rest. I mean, you need to assume that probability for uh, the adults, okay, that's living in the homes, is actually you won't get any zero adults within a living homes, okay? So it's zero. Second one, in a little league softball game, each player went to bat four times. So the number of hits made by each player is described by the following probability distribution, which is one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so this time you have a zero over here. So what's the mean of the probability distribution? What's the mean? So if you still recall, mean supposed to be this time this plus this time this plus this time this plus this time this plus this time this. So when you are doing the calculation, how should it look like? So it is supposed to become ex equals to summation summation of x i uh, where uh, times probability of x i where i equals to 1 until n and your n equals to 4 if you recall if you recall okay sorry um maybe in a more uh, correct manner 0 1 2 3 4 so this one is not start with 1 this one is start with 0 okay so in that case of course you can put 1 as well then in that case your, your x your x basically is uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, okay? But you refer to that particular value to be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, okay? Because uh, remember, x, uh, x1 can be 0, x2 can be 1, and so on, okay? Basically, you're referring, you're using algebra over here, but your exact value is this one, okay? So, and then, uh, we continue. So what we do is basically you do a summation over here. So it's 0 times 0 0.1 plus 1 times 0 0.2 plus 2 times 0 0.3 plus 3 times 0 0.25 plus 4 times 0 0.15. Okay, so you basically is the whole process down there. Down here and you will get how much? 2.15. And you want to check your answer since it's an expected value, right? Expected value. So you need to double check whether it's actually within the range that you have 0 to 4. Okay, 2.15 is within the range, so it's making sense. The third one, 
The number of adults in living hood in a randomly selected city box is described in the probability distribution below. Okay, so you notice that it's actually the same as question one. So what's the standard deviation of the probability distribution? You basically need to apply the formula. Okay, so uh, and you need to calculate your expected value first for you to apply the standard deviation, right? So expected value if you follow back the same equation, and then you get the answer of two point one. Okay, and for your standard deviation, how are you supposed to calculate? Standard deviation square equals to um, summation of mean, eh, sorry, summation exact value that you actually have. This is a 0 until L. This one is 1, 2, 3, 4. Equals to 1, and equals to 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. So this one, x1 is uh, xi minus exponent uh, expected value of x, right? So where, where is the expected value coming from here? Then what else? Times probability of xi. Okay. Uh, yeah. This whole thing. Then basically you need to do this one. Every time you actually get this one xi, you need to do 1 minus 2.1. And then what else? Oh, you need. Oh, wow, that's why I feel weird. You are missing. We are missing a square over here. So x minus the expected value, which is mean. So one minus two point one. You square it so that you don't have negative values, and then you times the probability value that you have. That you got your answer. So and then you need to do it four times. So in the end of the day, once you do all the calculations, because it's gonna be a bit lengthy, so I don't really write one by one over here. But mainly is one minus two point one times 0 0.25 then plus 2 minus 2.1 a square rate and then times 0 0.50 and then plus again and then plus again okay and the other day you will get 0 0.79 okay hey, sorry this one is not not finished yet because this one is variance so for you to get standard deviation which is uh requested from a question you be actually become 0 0.889 because you do a square root on jaw, uh, 0 0.9. It's 0 0.79. Okay, so right now, a square, uh, three coins, uh, sorry. Um, question four. A fair dice, a fair six-sided dice is rolled four times. So what's the probability of no twos turning up? What do we understand by no twos turning up? Remember, if you want to model it using a binomial distribution, actually this one is the binomial questions, if it still requires independent cases, and you're actually checking in the probability of twos. Okay? No twos turning out, twos turning out, and four twos. So you can see that there's actually a two uh, clear-cut cases, uh, which is success to get two and failure to get two. So in that case, you'll be able to tell your n is basically four, because it's coming from here. Your P is actually 1 over 6 because your P is measuring how many tools that you're actually getting from here. And your Q basically is 5 over 6 because it's uh, 1 minus 1 over 6. Okay, So from here, your calculation is probability of X equals to 0 for these questions because no two turning up. And your X basically is measuring events of two turning ups. All right. And this one, number of two is actually turning up. This one is x equals to 2, and this one is x equals to 4, all right? So in that case, uh, for you to solve the first one, which is uh, it's going to be looks like n choose r, so it's like uh, 4 choose 0, okay, times uh, one, to the, uh, 1 over 6 to the power of 0, and then times 5 over 6 to the power of 4, because it's 4 minus 0, okay? So you just apply the formula, then you'll be able to get in this one, and eventually you solve this whole thing, you will get your answer of 0 0.4, 0 0.4823. Same goes to the rest. You are just changing the value of x over here. So for this one is 4 choose 2, this one is 4 choose 4. The same probability is actually used for P and Q, but this time your X is changing. So this one is two, this one is four, All right? And your N minus X is actually changing as well. So your N is this one, right? N minus X is two, 
for these cases, and n mass x for these cases is actually four, uh, zero. So in that case, you get other results for different kind of ones over here, and you get one one five seven or this one and zero point zero 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 seven seven one six. Okay. So this one, when you are able to decide this as well as identify your x that you need to calculate, then you are safe. Okay. For question five, according to a recent studies, 67 of the brain cancer, okay, 67 of the brain cancer patients die in less than five years after being diagnosed with the disease. So what is the probability that eight random cellular patients Eight will survive, six will survive five years or more. This one is measuring die. This one is measuring survive. We are usually focusing on the questions that are actually at the end. So in that case, we know that 67% if it's die in less than five years, that means that the one that is actually surviving more than five years is 33%. And since this is the thing that you want to measure, so this is since it's the things you want to measure, then you know that um, your p your key your p is supposed to be from this one, thirty three percent, and then your n is eight, and your q will be sixty seven. So this one is important because if you don't read the question carefully, you might treat uh sixty seven percent as p and then thirty three percent as q. Okay, so this one is uh really important. You need to be careful. So from here. You also know that your x is 6, so your calculating probability of x equals to 6, which is, again, you're applying the same formula, it choose 6, and then uh, 33 over 100 to the power of 6, okay? And then 6700 to the power of 2. And you'll be able to get how much? 0 0.01623. So the rest, I, I just jump into the solution because you just need to solve the equation, okay? And usually when you solve the equation, you rely on the calculator, of course. Then we move on. A nail manufacturer reports that on an average, 8% of its nails are rejected. 8% of its nails are rejected. Okay, sorry. 8% of the nails are rejected uh, due to either too short or too long. So it's rejected, okay? The events that you're measuring. What is the probability that the batch of 20 nails? Okay, N is already decided over here. We haven't decided P and Q at this point. No more than two rejects, at least two rejects. So in that case, you, this one is also reject. Reject, reject, reject. Then basically you are, it's safe for you to tell that uh, for both questions, your, or your P is actually 8%. So in that case, N equals to 20, which is in total. P is equals to how much? 8%. And Q will be equal to 92 over 100. Okay, so we move on. If you want to put it in decimal number, it's also fine. So I try to write uh, in the decimal numbers, but no more than two rejects. What do we mean by no more than two rejects? Probability of X smaller or equal to two. Then you expand probability of X equals to zero plus probability of X equals to one plus probability of X equals to two, right? This is why you have one, two, three, over here, one, two, three, because it's two is included. So if you solve this one, it's gonna be 20, choose zero, and then 0 0.08, okay? And this time I use decimal points here, to the power of zero, 0 0.92 to the power of 20, plus 20, choose one, 0 0.08 to the power of one, 0 0.92 to the power of 90 this time, 20 minus one. Then we plus again, um, 20, choose two, 0 0.08 to the power of two, 0 0.92 to the power of 18 this time. Okay, so what's the answer in the end? When you solve this and solve this and solve this and you sum it up together, you will get 0 0.7880. How about at least two rejects? If it's at least two rejects, so it's probability of x more and equals to 
model or a uh, model equals to two, right? So it's actually direct reverse. But imagine if you want to sum, if you want to calculate like this, then you need to add probably x equals to two plus x equals to three, four, five, six, up until twenty. You need to count like nineteen times or eighteen times, okay? So in that case, is it? Uh, it's not wrong for you to do so, but there is actually a, a an easier way, okay? So what you can do is, uh, you do a complement rule, probably of x smaller than two. So notice that when you are changing signs. When you are changing sign, you don't really include the in, uh, you don't include the equal sign anymore. Two basically in here is not included. Of course, maybe some of you might want to write in a in a different way, which is it can be something like one minus probability of x smaller equals to one. In this particular discrete ex, uh, example, it's possible for you to do so. So it's actually okay. But um, if it's a continuous, then it's actually this one is better. Okay, but of course it's still the same uh, because. Uh, in continuous will be a bit different, slightly different because 1.99, you remember the 1.99, 1.999, all this kind of possibility is actually captured in here but not captured over here. So that's the main difference. Anyway, we move on. Uh, once you do this reverse, uh, sorry, complement, then it will become probability of x equals to uh, 0 minus probability of x equals to 1. And you actually calculated this before. So you can just borrow the answer from here, uh, borrow the values from here, then you get straight in the other day, get 0 0.4831. Okay. Question 7. Wait, yeah. Okay. Question, okay. Question 7. Uh, eight. I think I press the wrong button. Is it? Wait, yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. Correct. Okay. So the research institution received two visitors today. Two visitors for today. What's the probability that the institution received exactly three visitors tomorrow? So you notice that today and tomorrow are both 24 hours. So your time limit over here is actually the same. I mean, I mean the time range that you're actually having it is actually the same. So in that case, you know that your lambda, okay, we notice that I'm using lambda this time, right? So we, are, we can solve this question using Poisson distribution, lambda equals to, uh, sorry, lambda equals to two. Uh, I, usually, I for me to, I mean, avoid confusion, I will usually also write something behind is per 24 hours. Or per day okay so from here we have the mean number of lambda equals to 2 as I mentioned just now and then uh, you want to calculate what three visitors tomorrow so basically your x is equals to 3 and for you to apply your Poisson distribution it's going to be exponential to the power of negative x hey, sorry negative lambda why I'm saying that negative x negative lambda which is 2 then lambda to the power of x to the power of 3 and then x exponential uh, x uh, factorial so it's x factorial so in that case when you solve this equation then you get 108 0.1084 question 8 this one is the one that is actually a bit tricky An agent at a real estate agency sells on an average two properties per month. Two properties per month, which is fine. How clear the probability that in a given month he will sell several properties? Okay. Always students will ask me what is what do we mean by several properties? So when we are checking, uh checking on uh, uh, on the dictionary, several refers to more than two. Okay. So uh in here the question is asking probably uh, probably your x more than two. But for me, if you are having difficulties understanding this English, whether you are actually having you thought that maybe it's more than one or more than three, then you just write okay based on your understanding. Several means more than one or more than two or more than three. Then only you continue on your calculation. At least you can it's, you save a bit of uh your your marks even is maybe it's wrong, but uh you won't be fully deducted like oh. Uh, you understand the question wrongly, that's why you got 
zero, for example, for these particular questions. But whenever you are actually not very sure, then you write a bit more. How do you understand by the word several over here? Okay, so from here, we continue. This is what you need to calculate. And you, if you still recall, you won't be able to calculate your Poisson distribution uh, into, I mean, I mean for a, for a bigger kind of uh, situation because you won't you don't have any ending point at that. There's actually I mean based on the Poisson uh, concept you go up until positive infinity for your potential outcome over here. Okay, you can sell one thousand properties, two thousand properties. It's possible to be modeled by the Poisson distribution over here. Acceptable. Okay, you can still get probability from the Poisson distribution. So that's why from here you need to do a complement rule. Complement rule, which is 1 minus uh, x is more than equals to 2. Okay, so once you have this one, then you know that you need to do a, a expansion. 1 minus probably, uh, probably x equals to 0, and then plus probability of x equals to 1, plus probability of x equals to 2. Then, for you to expand this one, you can actually try to do some expansion where you actually do uh, like this, okay? Exponential to the power of negative 2, 2 to the power of 0, 0 factorial. Then you're basically almost doing the same because you're just swapping the values of 1, right? So values of x. Plus, uh, how much? Uh, Exponential to negative 2, 2 to the power 2, and then you got actually 2 factorial. Okay. Again, you can actually solve using calculator one by one is fine. Just that uh, you might want to have learned another way to actually double check your answer. So how are you able to double check your answer in here? 1 minus, you can take out the, all the exponential negative 2 over here, you know, because it's actually happening in every single term over here. Exponential to negative 2. Then, this one, you can solve it, 2 to the power of 0 is 1, 0 factorial is 1, so you got 1, plus 2 to, uh, two to the power of 1 is 2, uh, 1 factorial is 1, 2 divided by 1, you got 2. 2 to the power of 2 is 4, 2 factorial is 2, 2 divided by 2, eh, sorry, 4 divided by 2, you got 2 as well. So, that's why you'll be actually getting uh, 1 minus 5 exponential to the power of 2. Okay, and in the end of the day, once you, uh, you eventually solve it, you actually get 0 0.3235, okay? How about one or more properties but fewer than four properties? It's going to be a bit similar to this one, where prob uh, probably will be x, hey, sorry, uh, x, uh, one or more properties, right? So it's one smaller than equals to x, but it's going to be smaller than four. Okay, so when you expand it, it will be actually become probability of x equals to one plus probability of, hey, sorry, probability of x equals to two plus probability of x equals to three. And then you solve the equation, which will, in the other day, getting you a 0 0.7216. So I don't repeat it again because it's not that. Uh, it's, it's almost similar with this one. I mean, once you have decided, I mean, you have you are sure that what kind of properties that you need to actually calculate in here, which is one and two and three and four, is not supposed to be included. Then you'll be able to get your answer almost similar to this process. So that's how I just share with you the final answer in here. Just start to check your answer whether it's okay or not. And the last one, a property in a given day, assuming there are twenty working days per month. Okay. 20 working days per month. And then right now you want to measure day. Just now our lambda is actually lambda equals to 2. Sorry. Lambda equals to 2 per month. So right now you need to change it to day. Lambda equals to 2 divided by 20 per day. Why am I only divided by 20? Because you are assuming that there are only 20 working days. Of course, if you don't have this assumption, 
you can the mean this denominator it can be 30 it can be 31 depends on how you justify months or it can even be 28 okay so in that case uh, this one will be one uh, 2 over 20 so it's also 1 over 10 and from here your lambda is changing from one to another so your probability x equals to 1 equals to uh, or 0 0.1 uh, easier to write so because exponential to the power of negative 1 uh, negative 0 0.1 and then 0 0.1 to the power of 1 and then 1 factorial and you will get 0 0.09048 okay right now continue you have 20 shares of gas panels inspected for defects and number of defects detected and panels affected are given below so from the table, we know that, for instance, two defects were detected for each five glass panels. So what is the probability okay, of finding glass panel chosen at random that contains three or more defects? So from here, you need to think of a situation where is the defects over here. It's possible for a single panel to have more than six defects. Is it possible? Because right now, the information is given to you is actually 0 to 6 defects. If you are having the assumption that the maximum defects you can get from a sheet of glass panel is actually 6, 0 to 6, no more other uh, number of defects like 7 or 8 or 9, then you are actually able to do in a different manner. You can actually use the way that we actually solve in question 1 and question 2 to calculate your probability. Okay? But if you are actually using Poisson distribution. Poisson distribution, yeah? So, sure. how is it? Poisson distribution. Mm, Poisson distribution, which is... Uh, hey, sorry, I'm supposed to write lambda first. Lambda is mean. How are you able to get mean? This time this, plus this time this, plus this time this, right? Then you'll be able to get total if a uh, total defects okay total defects divide by number of panels total defects is how much it's 46 how many number of panels 20 so in the end of the day you will actually get 2.3 okay so from here uh, you'll be able to actually uh, know that your lambda eventually is this value okay and then for you to calculate probability of x equals to three or more defects then it's gonna be a probability of x bigger than equals to three then since you can't measure bigger than if you're using Poisson distribution that's gonna be one minus probability of x equals to 0 plus probability ah, it's getting laggy x equals to 1 plus probability of x equals to 2 okay so in that case you just need to solve based on the 1 minus uh, exponential to the power of 2.3 and then 2.3 to the power of 0, 0 factorial, plus so on, plus so on. So in the end of the day, you'll be able to get the answer of 0 0.4037. Okay? But try to think about it. If you actually assume, okay, assume to a situation where the number of defects is actually uh, is uh, highest you can get is actually six. What's the probability of it? Okay, there's another way. Okay, but provided you have that particular assumption. The last question is, the pedestrian walk across a particular intersection at an average rate of three hundred per hour. Okay, average rate of three hours per hour. So find the probability that no one crossed the intersection in a given minute. No one. Before that, your lambda is actually. 300 per 
Ow. Oh, it's getting laggy. Okay. Find the probability that no one cross across the intersection in a given minute. So you are changing from hour to minute. So lambda equals to 300 divided by 60 per minute. So equals to 5. So from here, from here, yeah, you know that the new lambda you're supposed to apply is actually 5. And you want to find out no one, no one cross. You want to find out no one cross. So it's probability of x equals to 0 equals to, uh, sorry, exponential to the power of negative 5, 5 to the power of 0, 0 factorial, and you will get 6.738 to the power of 10 and then times 10 to the power of uh, negative 3. Okay, but it's also equals to 0 0.006738. Just writing another standard kind of outcome. Okay, it's the same. What's the expected number of the pedestrian walking in two minutes? Remember just now your lambda is actually expected number or mean as well. So your expected number for one minute is five. The expected number for two minutes is going to be five times two equals to ten. Even here, you can actually write ex. It's also fine because your ex and lambda over here is actually referred to the same concept, which is mean. And the last one. Find the probability that uh, this expected number of pedestrian obtained in question 10, 10b over here actually walk across the intersection in a given two minute period. Okay, so it's actually trying to ask you what is the expected number of pedestrian, which is 10. Okay, really walked into an inter intersection in a given two minute period, and this means they want to measure x equals to 10. Expected number of pedestrian, which is 10. You want to measure the probability of 10. And then, by solving this one, since it's also using a 2-minute period, so your lambda is supposed to follow your previous one. So your lambda is 10, your x is also 10. So then you'll notice that every single value over here is all 10. And in the end of the day, it will become 0.1251. That's all for now. So the rest of the extra questions, right? You try yourself and you have any issues, you let me know. Okay? Because it's already a lot of questions. There are 10 questions actually over here going to be taking some of your time. But if you want to try more, then you can try on this particular extra questions. Okay? That's all. Thank you very much.